Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over four worked examples to show you how to do problems involving the energy, wavelength, and speed of a photon. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get into it. Question 1a says, what happens to the frequency of a photon of electromagnetic radiation as its wavelength increases? Well, remember from National Phi Physics, we saw that frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. So we can say that as wavelength increases, frequency decreases. And that's because of this inverse relationship, where wavelength is directly proportional to 1 over the frequency. So the bigger the wavelength, the smaller the frequency. Or the opposite is true, so we could say that as wavelength decreases, frequency increases. Part B then says to sketch a graph to show this relationship. Well, sketching a graph of wavelength against frequency, we should get a graph that looks like this. So if we put wavelength on the y-axis and frequency on the x-axis, it doesn't really matter which way around they go. You should get an exponentially decaying curve like this, which shows an inverse relationship. So this shows that as frequency increases, wavelength decreases. Question 2a says state the speed of a photon of light. Well remember photons travel at the speed of light c which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second from the data sheet. Part b then says what happens to the energy of a photon as its wavelength decreases. Well we can say that as wavelength decreases we've just seen in question 1 that frequency would increase so as wavelength decreases frequency increases so the energy of the photon increases. Since we have these two relationships here E is directly proportional to 1 over lambda, and E is directly proportional to F. So we could use either of these relationships, so we have that as wavelength decreases in the bottom, that would mean for a larger energy here, or since we said wavelength is decreasing, frequency is increasing, so that means energy increases as well. And lastly, part C says to sketch a graph to show this relationship. Well, your graph should look something like this. So if we put photon energy on the y-axis and wavelength on the x-axis, then again we should get an exponentially decaying curve, where we can see that as wavelength increases, photon energy decreases, or as wavelength decreases, photon energy increases. Question 3 says a photon of light has a wavelength of 589.0 nanometers. Calculate the energy of the photon. Well, remember there's two ways you can do this. So you can either use the two separate equations, V equals F lambda and E equals HF, or you can use the combined equation E equals HC over lambda, which remember I introduced in the theory video for energy, wavelength, and speed of a photon. So I'm going to use the quicker method here, which is the combined equation, but you can use the two separate equations if you prefer. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the energy E. We know that Planck's constant H is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. We know the speed of light C is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And remember, both of these are given on your data sheet. And lastly, the wavelength lambda is 589.0 nanometers. But we need to convert this into meters to use it in our calculation, remember. So that's the same as 589 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So writing down our equation, we can say that E equals HF, which equals HC over lambda. And you can hopefully see how we get that by rearranging the wave equation V equals F lambda for F which gives us V over lambda, which is also the same as C over lambda because V is the speed of light here. So substituting in for F here, we get HC over lambda. We can then substitute in our numbers here. So we have 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 times 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 589 times 10 to the minus 9. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 3.4 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Lastly, question 4 says a photon of light has an energy of 2.84 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Part A says to calculate the wavelength of the light. Well, writing down what we know from the question here, we're trying to find lambda. We know the energy E of the photon is 2.84 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Planck's constant H is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. And the speed of light C is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And remember, these last two are given on the data sheet. So writing down our equation, we have E equals HF is equal to HC over lambda. Again, just substituting in for F there from the wave equation. And then substituting in the numbers gives 2.84 times 10 to the minus 19 is equal to 6.6C times 10 to the minus 34 times C times 10 to the 8 divided by lambda. Now, if we want lambda on its own, we can multiply both sides by lambda. And that would give 2.84 times 10 to the minus 19 lambda is equal to this expression on the top top here and then we need to divide both sides by this number to get lambda on its own. So if you do this numerator first in your calculator and then divide by 2.84 times 10 to the minus 19 then you should get an answer of lambda equals 700 times 10 to the minus 9 meters which is the same as 700 nanometers. Part B then says which part of the electromagnetic spectrum does this light belong to? Well remember the range for visible light in the electromagnetic spectrum goes from 400 nanometers for blue or violet light up to 700 nanometers for red light. So that means we're dealing with red light here, which means it's visible light. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.